Dear Father Simon in the Holy Order, I am wanting forgiveness not for myself, but for my friend, who shall from this point on be referred to as Tom. Twelve years ago, Tom and I were at high school together, and as is customary in most high schools, you have to spend two weeks doing work experience at a local employer's. Anyway, I had secured my work experience at a local graphic design studio, and Tom had the honour of working at the local fast food establishment, the one which had pictures of a portly man wearing a white suit. Tom's job also came with a delightful polyester uniform. This is quite important. On my foot, it's probably shiny and sparky and that kind of thing. On my foot with a number of badges, so that stars shows how good you are. On my first day, I discovered that the graphics company I was going to be working for had recently been taken over and that they hadn't been told I'd be working for them for the next two weeks. As any 15-year-old would say, I saw this as a positive, as it meant that I could take the next two weeks off. Well, as long as neither my school or my mother found out. So each morning at 8 o'clock, I left the house, walked around the corner to the bus stop, but instead of waiting for the bus, I strolled across the road and into the park. This was a strategic move because it gave me the perfect view of my house and I could see when my mother set off to work so I knew when the coast was clear for me to make my way back home. I did this every day for the rest of the two weeks, but it was on the third day that I undertook my misdeed. Each morning I would go and take refuge in the park and each morning I would see Tom walking through the park to catch the bus. Tom is a creature of habit. Each morning he would get to the park entrance, sit on the second bench and enjoy a morning cigarette. Tom has since quit smoking, so you can't hold that against him. On this day, <clears throat> excuse me, on this day, Tom was sat on his bench as usual, and just as his cigarette was about to go out, he threw it on the floor. Unfortunately, the lit cigarette did not land on the hard concrete, but on an old copy of the local newspaper. As you can imagine, the paper set on fire, and Tom stamped on it frantically, and in doing so, set light to his high-quality fast-food restaurant trousers which, as I said, were quite important. All I could do was to watch as Tom danced around like a lunatic trying to extinguish the flames. They eventually went out and Tom seemed to be all right, apart from the fact that the trousers, which now resembled a skimpy pair of cut-off shorts like George Michael and Andrew Ridgely used to wear in their wham days. I didn't see Tom again until we returned back to school. The first day back, everyone in my year group was summoned to the hall for an assembly. A surprise assembly. We all sat down in rows facing the stage when our headmaster, who was a large, red-faced, angry man, walked in. Instead of greeting us with his usual, Good morning, everyone, he announced, Tom, Tom Smith, please make your way to the stage. Tom casually walked to the front and up onto the stage, at which point two local firemen walked in. Everyone in the room looked at each other somewhat confused. Our head teacher then went on to tell how this particular young boy in front of us all had single-handedly and bravely put out a fire in the local park which was started by a bunch of hooligans who had been smoking and that he would be rewarded by the local fire and rescue department with a gift card for £20. He had apparently saved the historic bandstand which was threatened with flames. If it hadn't been for Tom leaping around and stamping out the flames, it would surely have been lost. This was the story he had told. Tom was at the front looking very smug with himself. We were all told that we could learn a lot from this young man as he had shown what a true man he is. I have never told Tom that I knew the truth behind his heroic battle as I could never tell anyone that I didn't actually go to my work experience. So I'm not asking for forgiveness for the fact that I didn't attend my work experience and that I lied to my mother and school or for not helping Tom whilst he was on fire. I am asking for forgiveness for Tom. Now, Tom is getting married in a few months' time and I'm going to be his best man. I'm also aware that Tom downloads your Confessions podcast. I believe they're available via the Radio 2 website and other internet stores. So he will definitely hear this. I'm giving Tom the chance to come clean about this before I make it one of the main parts of my best man speech. If you, if you think this sounds like blackmail... It is. You could be right. So I'm asking the confessional to forgive Tom for starting the fire, for lying to his parents, the school, and the local fire department, and for being a little smug, uh, a little smug so-and-so while at school for no reason whatsoever. But he did look great in his burnt polyester trousers. 
something we could all learn there. Well, it's an interesting tale. Be very careful, of course, um, if you're wearing one of those suits. What do you say, Sister Rebecca? I think there's nothing to forgive Tom for, actually, because, um, I mean, nobody was harmed, and uh, he just made the best of a bad lot. He made a fantastic story, a heroic story for himself, out of... Lying. Uh, lying. Lying. Getting but money. nobody was, was harmed in that lie. Who do, you and, think pay, uh, who do you think paid for that £20? Who funds the firefighters <laughs> I think we do oh yes you'll take it to a different level now I'm I never speaking thought of the taxpayers of that. yes well um <laughs> hmm I think it wasn't that much money oh, and okay. I really think it was fine what I want to know is what happened to the polyester trousers did he turn up at work with the little shorts well, on I imagine so he looked like George Michael in 1982 anyway so Tom is forgiven there's a thought yeah, I, w- I would always caution. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make a squeaking did, sound? Yes. I'm so sorry. I'd like to apologise to the studio manager over there. Um, yeah, it's, you should never wear polyester trousers. My mum used to wear polyester. Just your mum used to wear polyester trousers. You probably don't even know. They're like nylon. Things. You used to have nylon sheets. Bry nylon. Do you remember yes. Bry nylon? And Al- Alan Freeman with Brentford nylons doing the ads <laughs> on the television. <laughs> Do you remember that? They're yeah. Fantastic. It's not a great fabric. It's not a great look at any. So I'm quite pleased that they went up in flames. In all honesty. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can't understand why his little legs weren't hurt, but I, I'm glad that the, the nylon disappeared. So I think um, I am going to forgive you because you couldn't really give yourself away. Tom really shouldn't have been smoking. It's a terrible habit. I don't think people should. <laughs> no. So that's a bit of a lesson for us all there, yes. I think, Simon. Uh, so you are forgiven. I'm not saying anything. No. no. No, in case except- your son's listening. <laughs> Brother Matthew. Uh, I remember my, in my first job, I had to wear brown pants. And Do you mean is, pants? Is it like trousers, yeah. Oh, say trousers. Okay, no, they, whether they were pants. Well, and, is this America? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, they were brown, <laughs> and I'd have done anything not to have to wear those brown. And if anyone had offered me the opportunity to burn those trousers, that's what I'd what, have done. What job was this? It was in went? a hot dog stand. Um, it wasn't Newsbeat then. I thought it maybe was there was Newsbeat, a Newsbeat no, uniform. No, no, yes, the Newsbeat brown trousers. Robert Kenzie still wears them. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so I am going to forgive because if I'd had the chance, I'd have done the same. <laughs> and um, I, yeah, and, and also he d- he didn't do anything wrong, did he? He just basically didn't stand up for the and shout out, "You are taking that twenty pounds <laughs> by deception, sir. Show us your trousers." So, uh, yes, forgive. <laughs> that's there another story, I think, that, yeah, actually. That's another, 